play. So, this is one of my favorite games. Uh, one of them. Not the favorite, but one of them. So welcome to 999, nine hours, nine persons, nine doors. I can never get that order right. I always want to say nine persons, nine hours, nine doors. So I only get two out of the three wrong. Um, it's a game that came out quite a while ago. It had a sequel called, nope. It had a sequel called Virtue's Last Reward. It was pretty great. Uh, both games actually. I mean, if you're into this kind of game where it's mostly like, mystery and death and scary it's good uh they're coming out with the third installment which actually funny story behind that they weren't going to do because everybody in japan they don't they're not crazy about this game everywhere else in the world though we're all crazy about this game so yeah they decided to come out with a third installment thanks to the fan effort from uh europe and north america and several other places and so now we're going to be getting Zero Time Dilemma on June 28th. So if you haven't played these games before, get them, play them, they're fun. If you have played them, please make sure you're going to buy Zero Time Dilemma. It's going to be on Steam as well as on the Nintendo 3DS. And I want to say it might be on the Vita too. Or whatever PlayStation's new. Uh, handheld is. I don't know. I don't pay too much attention to PlayStation anymore. I have been disappointed too much. I would like to overwrite my save. Yes. Ba ba ba. ba data overwritten. Woo! Wait. Woo? <laughs> this game is fiction. All names, characters, and incidents portrayed in this production are fictitious. Just in case you were worried that this might be real. have to read. <laughs> okay, there we go. A loud noise startled Junpei awake and his eyes snapped open. As they adjusted to the light, he realized that he didn't recognize his surroundings. Ow! With a crack, Junpei's head connected with something metal. He rolled over and threw out his hand to steady himself, but he found himself groping at empty air. His balance lost, and his still fuzzy mind struggling to understand what was going on, Junpei tumbled down to the cold, gray floor. Uh, 
Yes, Kasaku, I will gladly accept your friend request. Yeah, god damn it! Yeah, what the hell? Junpei glared around the room, still trying to determine where he'd woken up. The fall had shaken the last cobwebs of sleep from his mind, and finally he understood where he'd fallen from. It was a bed. A three-level bunk bed, in fact. Junpei had fallen, apparently, from the topmost bunk. His shoulder hurt, his knee hurt, his hip hurt, his entire body hurt. He feel bump forming on his forehead where he'd slammed it against the low ceiling. He wondered if that bump was the reason he felt his vision wavering a bit, but that seemed unlikely. At first, he thought the tremor that ran through his legs was just another effect of his rude awakening, but as he looked around, he realized it was real. The whole room was shaking. Was it an earthquake, he wondered? It didn't seem likely. It was shaking far too quickly for an earthquake. Boy hasn't been in many earthquakes, has he? Things can get pretty shaky. Then again, Junpei had no idea what it was, if not an earthquake. He tried to tell himself it was important. Junpei rubbed the growing bump on his head and gingerly climbed to his feet. His balance regained, he finally took his first good look around the room. And muttered to himself, Where am I? His pain momentarily forgotten in the face of confusion of his con circumstances, Junpei looked around the room once again. Let me just review the configuration for the control. Where is it? Tools. Uh, I forgot how the controls are set up on this particular emulation. Wait, there's a thing that says shut up. Good job. Uh, no, that's fine. That's fine. Configuration? No. Frame skip? No. No. Control configuration. Okay. Okay, so it's number pad. And then we have X, Z, a S. Okay. That's pretty good. Okay. Cool. Minutes passed while Junpei struggled to get his bearings. Then, as suddenly as they had begun, the tremor ceased. A cold silence fell over the room. From somewhere far away, Junpei could hear the sound of metal squeaking. He felt his stomach tighten. There were a thousand things that sound could have been, but none of those things he but none of those things he could think of were good. In an attempt to distract himself, Junpei looked around the room once more. Third time's a charm. There was a stove that looked more antique than functional. The three-level bunk bed had mattresses that were so thin they were little more than blankets. On the other side of the room was an identical bed, and set in the wall between the beds was a slightly dirty iron door. The first thing Junpei noticed about the door was the number roughly emblazoned across it. On the surface of the door, in red paint, someone had written... Five. Five? What's this five mean? Suspicious, and still utterly confused, Junpei approached the door slowly. Standing at last in front of the door, Junpei grabbed a hold of the L-shaped handle. A push yielded no movement, and a pull resulted the same. A few more tries cemented the truth in Junpei's mind. It wouldn't open. It didn't matter how much he pushed and shoved, the handle wouldn't budge. Next to the door was an odd-looking device that reminded Junpei of a card reader. It didn't take a genius to figure out that the odd-looking device was keeping the door shut. Junpei knocked hard on the door. Hey! Hello? Is anyone there? Open the door! There was no response. 
Jupe threw his left fist into the door. That's gonna do something. And stopped. What the hell is this? He wasn't really sure what else to say. Yeah, looking at that, I'd be very confused too. On his left wrist was a bracelet of sort he'd never seen before. In the center of in the center was a large LCD I can't read. In the center was a large LCD display. It looked like nothing else so much as a watch, but it clearly wasn't that. After all, it only showed a single number. Five. That's that's the same as the door. True, the numbers were the same, but he had no idea what that might mean. All he knew was that it was strange and new, and he wanted it off. Sorry, I'm trying to see if my title updated or not. It's irritating that it didn't. Real quick, we're going to pause and double check on that. I'm doing that just to make sure that it doesn't pop up all my other information here. Uh, Twitch. Channel. Please mute, please mute. Nope. Okay, there we go. Yeah, no, it didn't update. What the fuck? Let's see here. There we go. It's starting to update. Cool. Alright, we'll bring that back up. Junpei flipped his hand over as if to remove the watch, but... The other side of the bracelet was solid. No buckle, no clasps, nothing. He sighed and flipped the thing back over. There were a number of rivets around the rim of the face. Perhaps... Maybe just pushing them will do something. But no, no they don't. He pushed them, but nothing happened. On a watch, they might be dials for adjusting time or date, but on this bracelet, they did nothing. Not true. Junpei was at a loss. What was he going to do? Growing more desperate, he began to tug at it. However, uh, damn! Ugh, it's no use. Damn thing won't come off! A steel ring ran from the face around Junpei's wrist and back into the face. He wouldn't be pulling the bracelet off at any time in the near future. What the hell is the deal with this thing? Sorry, I need to take another bite of food here. Yes, I'm doing a cardinal sin, but I didn't have much time to eat. I was too busy setting up my new na layout. Do you like it? Although this layout is strictly for uh, 1080p and for the, what's it called? Nintendo 3DS setup or Nintendo DS setup. Frustration and desperation were beginning to mix as the reality of the situation began to dawn fully on Junpei. So much was happening and none of it made sense. Junpei felt as though he were about to explode. Where am I? And why the hell am I here? Why? Why? What the hell happened to me? Oh, snap. It was at that moment that he noticed the window. The window was round, rimmed in riveted brass, like a window from an early 20th century ship. 
What? Wait, am I in a ship? Junpei walked slowly towards the window. He could see nothing beyond it but thick, impenetrable darkness. Yes, it's penetrable, which is clearly why it's darkness. <laughs> Junpei squinted, trying to see something, anything. It was at that moment. Fuck. What the? You gotta be kidding me. What the hell is going on here? Well, fuck it. There's gotta be something here to help us. Seek a way out. Let's go this way. Uh, ooh, what's this? Ooh, what's this? 